this needs to be underlined and brought out and, and stated openly. The military is used to conduct operations to, at the very least, disarm and defend against enemies, and perhaps most commonly to obliterate enemies. And they are now admittedly taking their weapons of propaganda, in this case, and aiming them at the Canadian public. They are saying, they're openly saying that you in the Canadian public are the enemy. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. You are tuned into Propaganda Watch. And for the first and so far only time in the entirety of the Propaganda Watch series, we have a special guest to join us to dissect some very interesting propaganda that went through the news feeds recently. Uh, you will know a little bit about this if you saw my recent uh, New World Next Week, where I talked about this with James Evan Pilato. But in that, I did reference uh, where I first saw this story, which was Dan Dix of PressForTruth.ca, who broke this story, uh, Canadian Military Fake Wolves Fear Campaign Exposed. So I will link up that video in case you haven't seen it yet. I suggest you do so to get up to speed on this fascinating, crazy, wacky tale of Canadian propaganda. But let's bring him on to talk about it some more. Uh, Dan Dix, thank you for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. All right, let's uh, let's delve into this story. And as I say, I mean, I, I can't even express how crazy this story is. So let's try to do exactly that. Um, first of all, for people who haven't seen your video, haven't seen my video, don't know anything about this story, can you tell us where does the story source from and what happened in Nova Scotia, question mark? Uh, yeah, so it's sourced from, uh, I believe it's the Ottawa Citizen, and this is where people in uh, Nova Scotia began to actually receive a physical letter in their mailbox coming from the government uh, saying that we just have a bit of a warning. Uh, there are some wolves in the area. We purposely released the wolves, but now they may become a menace. And we just want to warn you that be on the lookout. There's dangerous wolves potentially in the area. This obviously had the townspeople rather concerned. And uh, when they could contacted the, 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 the government, of Nova Scotia, uh, the government responded saying, this is not coming from us. This is a forged fake letter. Uh, they didn't even know at the time that it was actually the Canadian military who forged this particular letter. And it was all part of a massive propaganda campaign that they are carrying out against the Canadian people in an attempt to gauge how they would react to this situation, this scenario that obviously had them terrified. They even went to the extent, James, of putting up loudspeakers that would emit wolf noises in, in, in the area. So the, the extent to which they tried to uh, scare the Canadian people just to, I suppose, gauge their reaction uh, was absolutely insane. It goes beyond being illegal with forged documents, but it's completely unethical as well. And it begs the question, what else is the Canadian military doing in terms of propaganda and scaring the Canadian people that might not be real? <laughs> it's just unbelievable. It, unbelievable is hardly the word for it. And, uh, and that's, uh, you, you bring up one of the po points of this story that I keep going back to because it's just so crazy. They tried initially to say, oh, it was just a propaganda training exercise for the Canadian military. We were just typing up letters to I don't know, practice our typing or something along those lines was essentially what they were trying to pass this off as. But as the Ottawa Citizen followed up uh, uh, in that article, which I will link up so people can read it, forged letter warning about wolves on the loose part of Canadian forces propaganda campaign that went awry. Uh, they do point out this, this aspect of the story. They say Department of National Defense spokesman Dan Le Boutillier said the fake letter wasn't meant to be released to the public and an investigation is underway to determine how that happened. The letter was an aid for the propaganda training. Le Boutillier said he didn't know why the loudspeaker was set up to transmit wolf sounds and that will be investigated as well. So in other words, yeah, don't believe their, their oh, nothing to see here, guys. It was just a little training exercise. So who set up the wolf sound loudspeakers and why? What was that about? Oh, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just the spokesman. Uh, don't ask me. Absolute craziness. And unfortunately, 
This is, uh, as you say, this only is the slightest window into what the Canadian military is doing uh, to prepare the public in a number of ways to accept all sorts of psyops. And I don't know if you saw this, but just uh, last week, the same uh, uh, journalist at the Ottawa Citizen, David Pugliesi, who wrote that, that original Canadian Wolf story, uh, followed up with a rather incredible story about the next stage of this propaganda campaign in the Canadian military. And I don't want to get my hopes up that there may be actual journalism going on in Canada in the mainstream media, but this David Pugliesi did write this follow-up. Canadian military wants to establish a new organization to use propaganda, other techniques, to influence Canadians, which starts by noting the Canadian forces wants to establish a new organization that will use propaganda and other techniques to try to influence the attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors of Canadians, according to documents obtained by this newspaper. The plan comes on the heels of the Canadian forces spending more than $1 million to train public affairs officers on behavior modification techniques of the same sort used by the parent firm of Cambridge Analytica, as well as a controversial and bizarre propaganda training mission in which the military forged letters from the Nova Scotia government to warn the public that wolves were wandering in the province. The new Defense Strategic Communication Group will advance national interests by using defense activities to influence the attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors of audiences, according to the document dated October 2020. Target audiences for such an initiative would be the Canadian public, as well as foreign populations in countries where military forces are sent. The document is the end result of what Chief of Defense Staff General John Vance has called the weaponization of the military's public affairs branch. The document is in draft form, but work is already underway on some aspects of the plan, and some techniques have been already tested on the Canadian public. Neon blaring flashing lights. This is, they're openly admitting this is already going on. They're already creating a new branch of the Canadian forces, or at least weaponizing the public affairs department to influence your tech, your behaviors, your thoughts. This is insane. And it's even crazier that they're openly announcing this to the public now. They're not even attempting to hide it. That actually worries me even more than the fact that these are going on is the fact that they don't even feel they need to hide these operations anymore. And as this article goes on to note, this does actually relate to the ongoing COVID-1984 hysteria. It says the Canadian forces have already tested that capability earlier this year. This newspaper reported that a team assigned to a Canadian military intelligence unit monitored and collected information from people's social media accounts in Ontario, claiming such data mining was needed to help troops who were to work in long-term care homes during the coronavirus pandemic. So they're already admitting they're starting to monitor social media and all of these things. We've known for some time that they have the, the types of uh, software to create fake personas on social media and influence people's behavior that way. But as I say, they're coming out and admitting this. And as I understand, this ties back to other things that you've been noting about Canadian military rolling out psyops campaigns on the public in quite spectacular ways with uh, the trucks rolling through and everything like that. Tell people about what's been going on there. Sure. Uh, the, the propaganda is coming at, at all uh, at all angles, essentially. Uh, what you're talking about there is a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, I came a, a, upon a, a, a whole bunch of military vehicles that were essentially parading around in downtown uh, Vancouver. And when I inquired about what this is all about, they said it was, at first they said it was a training exercise, but it was meant for vehicle maintenance. Um, but they were all dressed up in, in, in their garb and, and they had, you know, they were standing out top the, out of the top of these vehicles as they drove around for blocks, a, a couple of, uh, a couple of rounds. And uh, I made the, the argument that this is essentially conditioning the Canadian people to essentially get used to seeing such a thing. And uh, that's, that's essentially what we're seeing. And as we're seeing this roll out on this side of things, uh, we're seeing the government actively um, uh, try to silence uh, 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 people like, like me, for example, who are saying we are creating fake news or putting out misinformation. So that's something else that blows my mind. I mean, um, the Canadian government gave $1 million to 
a firm, I think they're called SLC, uh, they're connected to Cambridge Analytica to start uh, uh, teaching uh, Canadian military men on how to engage in propaganda. And we're talking, they're teaching them how to modify behavior. They're not using this propaganda for any kind of a, uh, a, a good thing to try to steer society into a particular direction that may help them or, or save them or something. No, they're trying to modify people's behavior. And that should really uh, get people uh, wondering what's going on. So here you have the Canadian government actively trying to engage in, in this, while at the same time, uh, 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 silencing uh, people like me claiming that I'm putting out false information or fake news when they are literally engaged in open propaganda campaigns to scare the living daylights out of Canadians uh, for what purposes? Who knows, James? Maybe to offer a solution to all of the problems that they are creating in the world. And as we do move into this COVID-1984 nightmare into 2021, it remains to be seen how, how much uh, our rights are going to be taken away from us. And looks like they're doing the research now uh, to figure out how to make that uh, happen a little more smoothly on their end. Absolutely. Again, I just invite people to, to really reflect on what they think this means, that the Canadian military is now aiming its weapons of propaganda at the Canadian public to modify their behavior. Who in their right minds, thinks that this is the right use for the Canadian military, other than the most brainwashed of brainwashed masses. I just don't think anyone would think that this is within the purview of the Canadian military's you know, mandate. But I also want to stress, this is not your speculation about what the Canadian forces, uh, military forces were engaged in there. This is this has also come out in that same article. It says, this newspaper reported in July, the military had planned a propaganda campaign aimed at heading off civil disobedience by Canadians during the coronavirus pandemic. That campaign was to use similar propaganda tactics to those employed against the Afghan population during the war in Afghanistan, including loudspeaker trucks to transmit government messages. The propaganda operation was halted after concerns were raised about the ethics behind such techniques. Gee, you think? You think some people might have had problems with the Canadian military going around blaring propaganda messages through loudspeakers at the pocket? I, I do not, I cannot for the life of me, I cannot wrap my head around how anyone in Canada is okay with what is happening. I know the Canadian population is deeply, deeply indoctrinated into the cult of statism and worships their government in a lot of different ways. It's a deeply sad state of affairs, but I cannot believe people are so into the propaganda that they will willingly embrace it and dismiss, oh, you know, they tried that, they were, there were some ethical concerns, they scrapped it, don't worry, they're weaponizing the public affairs branch of the military, don't worry about it. it what, what's your sense on the ground of people and the way that they're reacting to this type of information? Well, just by looking around, uh, James, uh, people are very afraid here in Canada. Uh, you just look at the amount of uh, masks that are being worn when you go to the uh, grocery store. Uh, so there, there is a serious amount of fear state uh, brewing here in Canada. And I just wish the Canadian people would, would, would ask themselves this one question and realize what is it that the military is intended to do? What's their ultimate goal. And I would suggest, James, that the military is ultimately supposed to fight an enemy. I mean, that's the, the purpose of, of the military is to fight an enemy. So why are they being, uh, uh, is their time and energy being projected onto how to alter the behaviors and the ideas and the opinions of the masses? Are we the enemy now? I mean, that's what it seems like when uh, when they're, uh, you know, spending millions and millions of dollars to now train military personnel for how to scare Canadians. Um, I think we now clearly see it, it's 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 us versus them. This is a government clamping down on society and using the military to do it. And uh, it's happening right before our very eyes. You know, you are exactly right about that. This needs to be underlined and brought out and, and stated openly. The military is used to conduct operations to, at the very least, disarm and defend against enemies and 
perhaps most commonly to obliterate enemies. And they are now admittedly taking their weapons of propaganda in this case and aiming them at the Canadian public. They are saying, they're openly saying that you in the Canadian public are the enemy. I, again, I just have no words for how crazy this is. And unfortunately, this type of craziness is becoming the, let's say it together, new normal. Right, everyone? Because we're just supposed to lay down and accept it. But think also about what they are aiming their weapons of propaganda at. People who would, for example, engage in civil disobedience during the coronavirus pandemic, i.e., you know, those crazy anti-maskers and other people who are against lockdowns, we have to target them. They are the enemy in this case. And what is the enemy weapon that they are afraid of and want to disarm? It is civil disobedience. It is saying, no, it is defying the so-called orders of the so-called authorities. They are afraid of that, and they are practicing with their military how to disarm people who are uh, engaging in that tactic. So that's a sign right there that that is a tactic that I think we're going to have to explore in greater detail. Disobedience, disobeying orders is going to be increasingly important. And I know that's something that you've been involved in uh, for example, during the uh, lockdown several months ago, I remember the uh, footage of you um, out, out there at the protests getting honked at favorably and unfavorably and uh, uh, engaging in the social media wars and all of this. I know it's happening on a big scale right now. And this, all of these documents just further underline and confirm the point that they really are concerned about the things that you think and the way that you behave based on those thoughts is extremely important to the Canadian military, which is now openly announcing that the Canadian public are their enemy. Um, Just craziness, just craziness. Uh, Any other thoughts that you want to bring to this subject? Uh, Well, I mean, just on, on the notion of propaganda in general moving forward, now that we know this, I think people are going to have to uh, take everything from the MSN with a serious grain of salt. I mean, look, moving forward in 2020, whether it's under Trump or Biden, they're going to be making some huge moves towards all out authoritarian authoritarianism. Um, So that's going to be happening regardless of who gets selected into uh, into the office. So ask yourself when you see these see these new situations arise and these new uh, 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 solutions presented. Think back to this forged Canadian document and just ask yourself, how do we know if any of this is even really real? I mean, and then you've got to do the due diligence and really dig deep, um, and, uh, w- which is great that uh, the reporter from the Ottawa Citizen there was able to uncover that. That's what we need moving forward, guys. So just uh, have your thinking caps on moving forward and, and don't, uh, don't, don't fall victim to, to uh, the, the fake news that's, that's all around us right now. Exactly right. Yes, they they are admittedly putting out fake news and you cannot trust even official looking documents from the government. I mean, keep that in mind. They are openly lying to you uh, right now and saying, yeah, oh, that was totally fake. So yes, fake news does exist and it comes from the government and the military. Um, Craziness, utter craziness. All right, let's remind people one more time. Uh, Of course, they probably know by now that you are not a YouTuber uh, at this point, although you have a a secondary backup channel that hasn't been scrubbed yet, but whatever. Uh, Let's promote uh, the other ways that people can find your work. For sure. Uh, If you go to pressfortruth.ca, there's a banner at the top that says uh, uh, Press for Truth banned from YouTube. And on that page, it has all the links to all the other uh, sites that I'm on now. Uh, For example, BitChute, um, uh, Float, Minds and uh, LBRY, which I believe is now called Odyssey. Uh, these are the four main platforms that I'm focusing on right now because they're not engaging in censorship. They're, they're, they don't have algorithms that are designed to keep this type of information out of the minds of the masses. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on. So BitChute, Minds, Float, and Library, uh, all of those links are located in the description for any one of my videos. And of course, uh, I will be linking up pressfortruth.ca where you can go and f- find that uh, that banner and find all of those links. And I hope people, um, if they do appreciate the work that you're doing, Dan, I hope they will support it directly. Um, I know it is extremely important now more than ever that we have independent voices out there that are doing this. And it is harder than ever to get uh, new people 
uh, to even know that you exist because you're not on the controlled platforms at this point or increasingly being pushed off them. So I hope people who appreciate this work will support it and go support Dan directly. Uh, again, I'll throw in the link um, so that you can do that. Uh, Dan, I think we're going to leave it there for today, but thank you so much for bringing this story to my attention. My pleasure, James. Thanks so much. Take care.